Hello, welcome to this lesson in engineering mechanics, statics. Uh, we're continuing to work with vectors because as you'll find, every problem we work in this class is going to have a vector associated with it. In the last several sections, we've done vector addition by basically by trigonometry and geometry. We've learned how to arrange them on the board and draw pictures and draw resultants as sort of the other side of a triangle and then use triangle trigonometry law of sines and cosines and things to get the answer. And that works. I mean, that is the graphical way uh, to, to find resultants by drawing those triangles and doing that kind of thing. But what you're going to find is that when you get to more complicated problems, uh, it gets very tough to draw geometric um, pictures like that. For instance, all the vectors we've done so far have only been in two dimensions, x and y. That means the vectors all lie in the plane of this board so far. All right? But what you're going to find is very, very soon we're going to get into problems that have all three dimensions, x, y, and z. And you can draw pictures, but drawing parallelograms in three dimensions is, is tough. Uh, or finding the resultant of those, of those uh, vectors is tough, especially maybe when you have more than two vectors. I mean, obviously, if we have four vectors on the board, we can add them all together, but the way to do it is to kind of find the resultant of two of the vectors, and then find the resultant of the other two of the vectors, and then you take the resultant of those two that you just found, so you can add them all in, in sequence like that. But again, it gets cumbersome drawing picture after picture and keeping the angles uh, you know, consistent on the board and on your paper gets very tough. So what we're going to do now is introduce the concept of a vector in terms of its Cartesian representation. We're going to talk about uh, vectors represented that way. We're also going to talk about what we call scalar components of a vector. Now you should have been introduced to all of this stuff if you've ever taken a physics course, but I do know that it's been many years probably for a lot of you. Maybe you didn't even master it too well back then. So we're going to pretend you don't know anything about it. But at the end of this lesson, you should understand how to represent a vector as uh, uh, Cartesian representation, and we'll see so how easy it is to add them and subtract them when we know how to write them this way. So let's draw a picture, because that's how I always like to start everything. So here let's draw an axis here, an xy axis here. So here's x, and here's y. And on this xy plane, we're doing everything in x and y now, but very soon we'll extend everything to x, y, and z, and you'll see how easy it is to do that. Um, here is our vector. Let's say our vector goes something like this and it's vector f, and I have a bar over it which represents this is a vector quantity, right? Now, we um, can break up f into the x component of f, that is how much of this vector is pulling or pushing or whatever in the x direction, and also how much of that vector is pushing or pulling in the y direction. I really cannot stress how important it is to visualize vectors in terms of components. Because later in problems, that's all you're going to be doing is splitting vectors into x and y and adding them and things like this. Um, so when you see an angled vector like that that's pointing at an angle like that, you need to see it for what it is, which is pointing in that angled direction. But you need to also think about it, hey, this can be represented as a pulling force along x, and it can also be representing as a, as a pulling force along y, or a vector in the x direction and a vector in the y direction. And when you put those together, you get this vectored angle like this. So what I'm trying to say is this vector, if you were to take the projection of this vector, if you shine a flashlight above it, and this vector could cast a shadow down here, that shadow would be this long. It would cross the axis right here. Notice that this is shorter than the entire vector here, but that's okay because it's only the x component. It's only how much of the vector lies along x. So we call that f sub x, and that rep means that the distance from here to here represents how much of this vector lies along the x direction. Clearly